Welcome to the Mrs. Papers. Today we're going to talk about creating your own Primaris chapter. How cool is that, right? But before we get into our main topic, we're going to start like we usually start our shows with some hobby progress. I do you like to show hobby progress every single week? And this way I have a feeling that I've actually gotten something done. Plus it holds me accountable to keep on painting miniatures so that I don't lose my motivation. For the first piece that I'm going to show is a piece that I started before my computer died. Actually, I did a segment. I do segments like From Trash to Treasure. One of the Trash to Treasure bits that I did was taking a rhino that was way worse for wear and making it usable for my army. Since then, I've taken it to classes where I've actually taught subjects like weathering on that same rhino. It's really given it a lot of character within my army. Another thing that I started before the computer had passed away was Murder Fang, where I took a regular Dreadnought from a start collecting set or a starter set, and it was already painted up and I stripped it down. And since I bought, I built Bjorn the Fell Handed, I had extra pieces for Murder Fang, the Dreadnought. Uh, so what I wanted to do was take a regular Dreadnought and converted him into Murder Fang. And here is the result. Now, I don't know if you can see it very well on this picture, uh, but it came out phenomenally well. I'm very happy with it. It has a posable arm that I can move around, like an old action figure if I wanted to. So I could just change the aesthetic with it. Um, did a lot of different conversion pieces with it. Actually added an extra bolter right there uh, as well. And I really just think the final product came out really, really nice. Now I'm going to do showcase videos on each of the miniatures that I've built while my computer is being built and put together. Um, so you're gonna see, look forward to seeing actual in-depth videos on showing all the progress that I've made while the computer was down. I like to do that because I'm going to be learning a new video editing software. I'm learning Windows 10 as opposed to I was a Mac user. So there's a huge learning curve with a lot of different things that I need to learn. And making these showcase videos is an easy way for me to be able to do just that and to learn the programs. All right, continuing on with hobby progress is Ulrich the Slayer. That's right, I painted him up as well. Uh, it is the summer, so I do have some time. I don't know how well you can see it. It looks kind of blurry there. All right, uh, I'll do the best that I can. Anyway, um, again, showcasing these videos, uh, these miniatures, on the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion and on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, check that out. Also, I have an Instagram pain, uh, page, uh, the Miniatures Paintbrush on Instagram, or at the Miniatures Paintbrush. I think that's how it's done. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> so that's my progress for this week. Now let's get into computer hobby progress. Now I'm super excited. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. All right. I will rejoice and be glad. Okay, so this is the day where bah, 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 my video card actually came in. Now this is the super edition of uh, the 2070 uh, from NVIDIA. It's a GeForce by Gigabyte. Um, and this is my video card. Now, if you know anything about video editing, video is in the name of video editing. You need a decent video card. And this one is it. It was hard to get my hands on it because there's a high demand for them. But this, the day it dropped on Amazon, I was like, mine, you know? So, and I've been waiting since last month to be able to get it. So it's finally here. It's all done. I love it, love it, and I love it some more. And I think I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you uh, I'm gonna take this over to the actual computer, a pile of components, and I'm gonna actually show you, I'm trying to unplug the, there it is, um, so I can show you, but I think I should have some like, like theme song or something to show you. I think we should make this official and have like a theme song, what do you think? I think so, I'm gonna have some background music while I actually put this piece uh, with the entire pile of pieces 
for uh, the computer and you could see all the pieces that I bought that you helped uh, in the process. So let's see, I'm gonna go. Oh, the computer is really done. All the computer components are all here, and they're all here. Yeah, that's right, they're all the computer components. Look at these. Look, it's a mountain of computer components. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna be having, the, I'm thinking about having the computer here. I got this hobby desk, uh, which is really good. I got it at a consignment shop. Actually, check out consignment shops if you need desks. I mean, they're awesome. Uh, <laughs> really paid a great deal on that. Uh, but I'm gonna do that and when I'm streaming live videos. It might be like the background over here. Hopefully, I don't mind. You're gonna see the bless this mess over here where I have it. So it might be a little different from what you're used to when you see uh, my videos with having all that in the background, I have this in the background, maybe I'll green screen it, I don't know, we'll see. All right, but the desk is supposed to be over here so you might see a little bit of that going on. All right, so there you go, computer. Oh, I just have to put all this stuff together and get it all to work together. And uh, it's gonna be a laborious process to be able to do that. I actually have a friend in, uh, who's gonna help me build that computer and you know put it all together and make sure that everything is working. I wish I had Linus from Linus Tech Tips come over here. All right, so uh, I do have to say for Hobby Progress, I'm, I'm finishing those guys here so I can finish that start collecting box because the Primaris one is out and this is kind of dated so I kind of want to get that done. Plus, um, I'll show you in a second what I'm also working on as well. Now, this is comes from the inspiration from uh, Freak from the channel Frost and Fist, who actually started building his first space space marine um, space wolf. I'm sorry, not space marine, space wolf. And his first Space Wolf was Thunder Wolf Cavalry, which I think is amazing, which has inspired me. Freak, you've inspired me from the channel Frost and Fist. Check them out if you haven't seen them to get started on my own Thunder Wolf Cavalry and get that done. Now there's three in here, so um, I'll, I'll do a tutorial on one of them. I think the computer will be built and ready to go by the time I get to the third one. I'll do a, uh, a tutorial on one of them. Also, what I'm doing is, what I'm trying to do is build as many of the um, smaller Marines, I guess the tactical size Marines, uh, as I possibly can. It's summer for me, so I have some free time on my hand. I'm still, I'm still taking a class, but I have some free time on my hand. Kind of want to get all the smaller Marines done by the summer, so this way I can work on the Primaris set. I still have in Dark Imperium and Wake the Dead, and I have Tooth and Claw, and I have so many Primaris. You know, you see Forge Bane, or I, I'm sorry, Shadow Spear, not Forge Bane. <laughs> sorry, uh, but. Yeah, I have a lot of Primaris to go through, so I kind of want to, and once I go Primaris, once you go Primaris, you can never go back, right? So I kind of want to get all the small ones. I am doing two more after I'm done. Um, I think it's Logan Grimmar, right? Then I have to do the Wolfen. All right, those are the two. Uh, and then uh, for my brother, Wolf Brother Meeks, uh, who actually asked me to do tutorials on Nigel Stormcaller, which is, you know, fine cast. <laughs> and then uh, Rune Priest, he wanted to do tutorials on those two. So I'm gonna hook him up and I'm gonna do tutorials on those guys, on how I paint them up. Uh, so I gotta think about how I'm gonna paint them up. They're definitely coming down the pipe. Um, but yeah, once I'm done with that, I'm not doing any regular size Marines again. It's just gonna be all primary, so go home. So that's it with the Space Wolves. So I'm itching, I'm itching, I'm itching to get the Space Wolves. I'm itching, right? So get that done. I have a feeling once I finish Logan Grimnar and all that, that, you know, uh, the, the new Space Wolf Codex will come out and they're gonna have new Space Marines and they're gonna have more characters. <sighs> <laughs> so I'll have to paint them up again because you know they're going to look cool. Think of Ragnar Blackmane. Oh, I have a Ragnar Blackmane I need to convert. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Anywho, we'll see. I do have to get those done for James Meeks because he really supported the channel and, you know, he really came through. Came through for a brother. Really did. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the news. I found a lot of things interesting. Uh, Warcry is out in stores. 
Uh, if you don't know Warcry, um, if you want to pick them up right now, you can get it. Uh, if you're ever curious about Age of Sigmar, if you're a 40k player and wants to just want to dip your toe into fantasy, or you know somebody who likes the wargaming aspects of it, but kind of likes fantasy more than, you know, sci-fi, then, you know, point in the direction of Warcry. It's definitely a gateway game to get them in. Uh, it teaches people about Age of Sigmar. If you don't want to commit to an entire army and kind of get your toes wet, you can do this. This is definitely a good chance to do it. Comes with terrain, comes with everything you need in that box to get started, which is pretty cool. It takes place in Archeon's domain, which is called the Eight Points. Uh, Archeon uh, is the bringer of the apocalypse. He's actually right there, and I have to paint him one of these days. One of these days, I'm going to paint him. I should say one of these years. All right. Um, the rules are easier to pick up, in my opinion, than Warhammer Underworlds. And uh, the reason why I say that is if you ever watch the tutorial on how to play Warhammer Underworld, and then you watch the tutorial for Warcry, you can see one is definitely a lot shorter than the other, and so less convoluted. Uh, but I do enjoy it. I have every Warhammer Underworld box set that came out. Uh, I don't have all the warbands, uh, but, you know, I like them, and I keep picking more warbands up for fun of it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a little bit easier if uh, for to get into war, uh, cry a little more, and I think that it's more of a skirmish uh, 40k event. I mean not 40k, uh, Age of Sigmar than um, Warhammer Underworlds. Warhammer Underworlds, I think, it was designed more for Magic players who are into card trading and stuff like that but to have minis and have a board game you know experience um whereas i think that war cry is more of a skirmish game now i do have warhammer skirmish the book so i could play that as well but this is more like a more of a kill team kind of vibe to it so it's definitely a way to get in just like kill team is a way to get into 40k yeah so i think that's pretty cool all right so <clears throat> excuse me um, next up is Eisenhorn, which is being developed as a TV show. How cool is that? You know, Eisenhorn is definitely the coolest uh, Inquisitor out there in 40K, and now he's getting his own TV show, old BA, you know, Bachelors of Arts. That's what that means. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, and you can actually pick up the figure. Now, that's pretty cool, right? I think they still have it for sale. I know my hobby store will probably have it because they have really cool stuff. Um, yeah, Eisenhorn. Let's talk about new minis. All right. Let's talk about the bad first, and then we'll get into the good. Okay, so what I think the bad is, it's not bad for everybody. It's definitely not for me. Uh, is that Caged Dreadnought? Not cool for me. Only because it keeps on harking back to um, Aliens, where Ripley was in that cage and fought the aliens. It was like, I don't know, something about that cage stuff. Plus, he's like armor, and he's exposed, and what's the difference? I don't know. Uh, I, aesthetically, the size of it just doesn't doesn't mesh well with me. I just don't, It doesn't look proportionate to me. And um, if I'm going to spend 40-something plus hours on one miniature, then I, it's got to be looking good. You know what I mean? Just has to be, in my opinion. All right, so next up, uh, I want to talk about the new tank. Uh, the new tank, actually, I've seen a mock-up with it with tires, and I know people are like, oh, tires are going to get so shot up in the 41st millennium. I know. But you do have those motorcycles with them tires, and why can't you put the metal kind of tires or anti-gun tires? I don't know. Not rubber tires? Some kind of tires? It looks better with tires. It looks like a pickup truck. I like pickup trucks, but it looks like a pickup truck, and it needs tires, and big old knobby tires, in my opinion. All right, um, I think it'll look better, but as the way it is, eh, I, it's not for me. It's not for me. Um, okay, so let's talk about the good. All right, uh, Chief Librarian Tigarius looks bossome, like a boss, and he's awesome, so he's bossome. I just made that. TMP made bossome. All right, I, I think I did anyway. <laughs> 
oh, nothing new on this song, right? So he's holding up his staff like this, and he has those like ram horns on the tip of his staff. It looks really cool um, to be a chief librarian right there. And I could see you could do a, a conversion on that and make it a Space Wolves one, possibly. Uh, and then there's uh, Corsaro Khan, which is a white scar, and he has a, uh, a Quilla Eagle, Eagle, I think it is. Uh, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Uh, white armor with the red. Great aesthetic. All right, so uh, also the Primaris Lieutenant that was sold in the Wake the Dead set is now available for Singular Miniature. Now I got the, the Wake the Dead set. I actually crammed it into the Dark Imperium box set um, because, you know, I just took all the books out and I was like, well, I bought the Wake the Dead set and I got one half and I didn't get the box. <sighs> All right, so <laughs> it's because I ordered it online. And um, so I stuffed it into there. I mean, not gently, you know. I, I took out all the other filler. So there's nothing but minis in that box. Like, I open that box, I'm going to have, like, minis for days. Like, I don't know, 50 minis. I don't know. A lot of minis, at least. Um, <laughs> plus, I open that box. It gives me a reason to start my Death Guard army. I mean, I want to start that. I'm all this talk about Nurgle, and I haven't built a Nurgle piece yet. Okay, so I got to get on the ball. Uh, anywho, I have a great army in Sprue. I have 5,000 points on Sprue. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I'm at. Okay, so um, maybe not literally. I don't know. I never counted it up. Anywho, um, Gen Con. Let's talk about Gen Con. Gen Con. Gen Con. Gen Con's over, and I didn't even speak about it. My bad. All right, let's talk a little bit about Gen Con, which I think is really cool. Um, Aeronautica Imperialis. Now, some people, it's not their jelly. Definitely not their jam. But I think their target audience, sort of like Warhammer Underworlds is targeted for, you know, um, the Magic, the Gathering crowd. I believe this is a direct assault. <laughs> I couldn't help that one. Uh, against uh, X-Wing. Final Fantasy Games um, actually produced for um citadel for for games workshop for a while and did a, quite a few games then they went their own kind of way and one of the things that they made and they made war games to anima tactics which i really bought into and it never went anywhere i just thought the minis were cool and i always wanted to paint them up really nice never got a chance to though I had to sell them back off but um, Final Fantasy Flat Games have made quite a few games. And one of the games that they made that was really successful was called X-Wing, if you didn't know. And it has the fighters. And, and the big thing about X-Wing is, yes, the maneuverability. You have to take into account. You're using a lot of wargaming aspects. Great gateway game. But they have pre-painted miniatures. And, you know, the barrier of entry is, like, so low. You buy the thing, you play with the thing. The end. Not you buy the thing, you have to take it home, but prep the thing, you have to paint the thing, and then you have to base the thing, and then you have to make sure that it looks correct, and then you have to bring in the thing, and then you can play it on a separate day after you've done all that preparation. A lot of people are not into that. Some people just want to buy the package. I bought this thing. I want to use it. The end. You know, it's like any other thing that you buy in this world. You buy something. You want to use it. Well, for me, building and painting is using it. So, you know, that's me. But some people don't think that way. They just want to play. Uh, so X-Wing was the thing. So I wonder if Aeronautica Imperialis are pre-painted miniatures. Now, one thing I do have to admit about that game that I think is cool are the Orc version of the planes. Um, I like the Orc planes. I do. I think they're awesome. I think they're a lot of fun. Not enough for me to collect Orcs, but the planes are awesome. They just are. Um, so much fun. Maybe one of these days I'll just pick one up for the heck of it and paint it up. And maybe I'll paint it up for like a, I don't know, for a, a painting competition. You know, never know. All right, so. Um, let's see. Prime Minister Lieutenant. Yep, yeah, got that. Dreadfane. Now, the next couple of uh, games I'm going to talk about are games that really design more for... Uh, Target or any kind of those retail kind of stores, you know, where you have your, you know, your Monopoly, your Exploding Kittens now, your, you know, um, Cards Against Humanity, Code Name, I don't even know, Sorry, Dominoes, and then right in the middle, you got to have Dreadfane. Woo! All right. <laughs> and these other box sets. Uh, Dreadfane has actually looked like a starter set uh, to get into Warhammer on the Worlds. 
Um, so I don't know. It, how does that differ from what we have now? I don't know the rule set. I don't know how easy it is. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it's supposedly, it looks like it's simpler or a simpler version or a stream, mainstream version of Warhammer Underworlds or something. Maybe they're trying something out to make Warhammer Underworlds even more easier than it is. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, another game uh, you have is, well, Storm Vault. Now that looks like a dungeon crawl. It reminds me of this game called Descent. Now I, I got Descent, I got all the pieces, never played it, only because I got into D&D full and I didn't need a dungeon crawl when I added dungeon crawl on top of all the espionage and everything else that I added in my game. So I kind of did not need to have Descent. Um, but this looks like a dumb dungeon crawl game uh, set in the 41st millennium. And that seems interesting to me. That'd be fun. It's a cooperative game like that. Um, even more so than Dark Fortress. Dark Fortress for some reason, or Black Fortress, I'm sorry. Black Fortress for some reason, I, I just don't have interest in it, and I don't know why. I don't know, it's just not, not my thing. Um, Combat Arena looks like somebody who's afraid of commitment, that should be your game, because it only takes about a half hour to play completely. It's like four guys beating themselves up. Reminds me of Hungry Hungry Hippos, you know what I'm talking about? Forget about it. You gotta get them marbles. Now, you don't actually have to get the marbles in the game. But you do have four miniatures, and it seems that they're in four corners. It's like, ready, fight! I don't know, something like that. It's just, that's what it seems like to me. Um, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. Yeah, Beast Grave. I have every other Warhammer Underworld's game that came out, which was Shadespire and then uh, Night Vault, which I still have to paint those miniatures. Terrible, terrible, I tell you. Um, <laughs> so they're coming out with uh, Beast Grave now, saying that uh, they found a way out of the Shattered City, which I'm shocked because, you know, my gosh, what are you doing? You, you sleeping on the job? You don't even sleep anymore. You're dead. Uh, weird. Nagash is over here, by the way. I got to paint him up too. All right. So <laughs> one of these years. Um, so uh, you have that uh, uh, Beast Grave. Now, I like Beast Grave. I'm not crazy about Beastmen, though. Like, that's just not my thing at all. Um, two of the things that I don't like about Age of Sigmar, my, my aesthetic when it comes to armies, are corn, because, you know, demons like that freak me out, and um, the Beastmen. I've always had an issue with the Beastmen. If I had. One thing, cast the gores and stuff like gores. Freak me out. All right, so. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm conflicted. Because I know they're going to have new game styles, just like they did for Night Vault when they introduced magic and stuff like that. So I kind of want those aspects of the game. And the price point of entry is so low that I'm probably going to pick it up. But, yeah, those minis are not... Mm. One thing about those minis, though, are pretty cool. It looks like there's wood elves on one side, like genuine wood elves. I think that would, that's cool. You think the wood elves are going to come back? If you think so, leave one uh, comment in the description, and we'll talk about that. That'd be interesting. Um, there was one, one of my favorite minis, where wood elves, they're actually on stags, which was a really cool kit. I love it. It looked awesome. It's one of my favorite kits, I think, um, for a faction that I would not collect. So there you go. Um, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, so do you think? Oh, that'd be interesting. Wood elves, not Sylvanath, wood elves. All right, maybe they can be like, you know, one and the same or something. I don't know. Kind of cool. Alrighty, so that might be a thing. Okay, so that's enough for the news. Now to get into the. Question of the week, 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 week. All right, question of the week. We have several questions of this week. So I'm going to start off with Clarissa Santiago. She had great questions here. It's like, can you do videos on airbrush reviews and airbrush applications for beginners? I'm going to tell you right now. Um, 
I've used this. This is my Renegade Chrome from Badger. And I love it. I love it because it does its job. It's, you know, what you see on the packaging is what you get. Uh, it's American made, which is pretty cool. Um, America! Um, <laughs> and I use it as a daily driver. In fact, I don't use anything else right now. However, I bought that one. I got it at AC Moore. I'm a teacher, so you get, if you're a teacher, you get a discount. And you get uh, 40, I think it's 40% off as well on top of that. So you're getting a deep discount when it comes to that. Like almost half off or more, 60% off. Pretty cool. So I'm going over here because I'm getting another airbrush. Now, um, Badger Airbrush actually had a 50th anniversary sale. And they said all our um, airbrushes are 50 bucks. So I said 50 bucks for a $150 airbrush, a $200 airbrush. Yeah, I'm in. You know, there you go. So I picked up a Sotar 2020. Um, it has, I think it's the same needle size. It's meant to do fine detail. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same needle, needle size. So I don't know how it's fine detail, but I don't know. I brought it as a backup brush because this one broke one summer, oh, last summer and I was just like out of luck. Now, Badger has a thing where, you know, they'll only, they'll, they'll repair it for free, but you have to kind of, kind of buy the you know, the pieces, or just ship it, just pay shipping or something, and they repair it free for life. I think that's what it was. Um, and I sent it, but the thing is, I got it back much later. So their timeline when getting things back are very slow. Um, with this thing, I think it took about six months to get it, you know. Uh, but I got it for 50 bucks, and I was using this as the daily driver, so I was not waiting for this to come out in order to get my airbrush in. So that was just a unique deal where I already had a set. Um, AC more again, you can get a discount on this, but if you can get an online bundle, that's pretty cool as well. Uh, be careful. I mean, I wanted to buy quality from the beginning and a lot of people are like Badger, oh, it's not quality, but I mean, it gets me there. It does its job and I, I'm enjoying it. I like to travel on these and this has the same travel as this one. So I like to travel up and down and I love to push back. So that really, really makes it. Uh, easy for me to use and comfortable and I'm very comfortable with the travel uh, and the travel is how much paint you're going to apply to the air as opposed to the air that you put onto there and I can control both of them uh, to different and varying degrees as I can control the pressure with um, my air compressor. All right, so as far as airbrushes are concerned, I would like to do a review on the Iowata CS and the Harbor and Steinbeck Infinity, um, Infinity CR. Uh, those are the two that I lust after. <laughs> Although, I don't know. Uh, the Infinity CR is about 300 bucks. So that's you know quite an investment to do a review. So, unless they had some amazing deal that I didn't know about. It uh, doesn't look like I'm going to pick that one up just yet. Um, an Iowa to CS, everybody loves it that I've heard of. But, you know, if my name broke, then I'm not going to fix it. And if I'm getting to the same destination, then I don't care. Um, so, there you go. As far as review uh, paintbrush applications for beginners, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, do, I'll make videos for that. That's awesome. Yeah, in fact, uh, I'm doing a class. My next class that I'm teaching is going to be about uh, airbrushing for beginners. So I'm actually going to have people practice their techniques and their skills on airbrushing. And, you know, I'll be there as a tutor. Uh, my friend Mason is going to help me be my assistant. He's going to help out. Um, to do airbrushing tutorials, you know, and just, just general how to use an airbrush, what the travel is, how much air pressure should you use, uh, how to clean your airbrush between um, going through paints, um, how you should um, clean it completely, how to disassemble and reassemble to, um, to deep clean, how to take out your needle and things like that, and, you know, how to replace it. Um, if you need to. Yeah, I'll go through all that for the basics, the 101 class, and then I'll have a 102 class, where it's using transitions, using inks and paints and all different kinds of medium, and you know, 
And again, uh, a lot of practice. People gotta bring in their airbrush and practice, but I can do videos on how to do all that stuff um, and how I use the airbrush. So just beginner airbrush thing. Yeah, I'll do tutorials on that. So thank you, Clarissa, for sending that in. I hope that answers your question. All right, Emily Yaschekko, because when I put it into Google, how do I pronounce, and I typed in your last name, it gave me three ways to say it, and one was Yaschekko. <laughs> I'm horrible, aren't I? All right, but I'm trying. I don't, I don't do this thing, I persevere. I don't do this thing called give up. I just don't. Um, <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you at the NOVA Open. All right, so it says here, well, because I wrote it down, it says, what was your thought process in planning your freehand? Are you talking about the Night Titan that I did? Um, I'll talk about the Night Titan first, then I'll do my general. All right, so for the Night Titan, uh, the carapace, what I did was uh, look through the codex for the Space Wolves, look at skulls and stuff like that, and I took like little components, like I like this skull shape um, of this wolf skull, and then I like that, like the dangling tassels that he has, and the tooth uh, that came down from another one. And uh, when it came to wings, I didn't actually have wings planned. I think it was more like um, I was there with Vince Ventrola and I kind of put that on there in the class that you were in for CK Studios. And I said, it needs something. I don't know what. And I was like, wings. And Kula has wings. Why not? So I let the muse take me for that one, uh, for the accent. So the general idea, the value sketch, if you will, um, is there. And then I let the muse take me as getting created. So... I start off with something and I don't say no to the muse. I don't, I never say no to the muse. As far as the shoulder pauldron, um, that was help with Vince Venturella. I get outside help as much as possible. Getting feedback from other people is wonderful. It, it makes you a better painter. Um, so I love the CNC's. And you don't have to take all the advice, but you definitely learn. Like if people are picking up things and a lot of people are picking up things and that's gotta tell you something, you know? Um, so for the shoulder pauldron, he kind of came up and said, like, hey, how about I do a gaping maw, like a wolf maw? And I'm like, wow, a wolf maw, okay. So I tried to do one in the class that we were in, and it looked like he had gingivitis and his teeth were falling out. It looked more like a world eater's kind of mount. It was like, ah, it did not look right. So, you know, I got the feedback, and I looked at it, and I said, it looks like it has gum disease, and people are like, don't be so harsh, and I'm like, I'm just being honest, it does look like it has gum disease, I'm, I'm going to have to redo that. So, uh, what I do is I looked up on Pinterest for, uh, I hit up Pinterest for some uh, images that might inspire me, I looked up wolves, and roaring, and, and you know, Maws, and I looked up a whole bunch of things there. And I went to Google Images and did the same thing and looked it up. Um, I looked up several things. I got some feedback. I, you know, uh, messaged Vince Ventrilla. I said, well, what do you think of this? As I was painting it, he was like, well, it kind of needs a little more of this. And I'm like, you're right. And then I look up. Now, as far as the style in which I paint it, um, ever since I was a kid, I used to take the Sunday comics and try to sketch them out. Not Trace, try to sketch them out. And so, you know, you got the Beetle Baileys, you got the, the, the Snoopy, you got the, well, it was Peanuts. Uh, you got, you know, Blondie and Dagwood, or is it Dagwood and Blondie? And that was just Blondie. I don't know what it is now. Um, you had Hagar. Like, I used to just draw those things for fun and just challenge myself by looking at something and drawing it and not tracing it. That was not a big thing for me. So that cartoonish kind of style is my kind of style. So I think that the mall is a little cartoonish, but that's okay because that's kind of my style. Uh, it's the one I like to paint in. So, you know, I got that going for me. Um, as far as the freehand on the foot, um... I kind of, it's a combination, that was more Pinterest. I saw something and I was like, oh, I like the back of that and how the, the hair is kind of flowing out. And then it's like, oh man, I like the, the sideward moon on this side. Uh, I saw a moon like with a wolf and I kind of just incorporated. So I just like, I take things from different kind of inspirations. I sketch them out 
and I'll do several versions of them. And then the, I'll decide between the versions which one I'm going to do. And then I'll just redo it and then redo it again for the third time and when I feel comfortable doing it at a smaller scale, that's when I apply it to the mini. So yeah, I draw things several times before I actually apply it to the minis and I try to get it smaller and I draw it smaller and then I draw it smaller and when I'm comfortable with it, I know already, well, the ear's gonna go like this. I know because I did it three other times, the ear's gonna go like this. So that's why when I actually draw it onto the miniature, it comes out like that. And then all I have to do is once it's all drawn on, it's like painting a miniature. Once it's all drawn on, you already have the lines and everything else, paint in the lines, you know what I mean? Just try to get those transition goes. Web blend a little bit, play around with color, value sketch if you have to, and then just like tighten things up. Put a lot of um, slow dry in there. So this way, you know, you have more workable time with your paint. So you could do those blends. Um, so I think that covers everything. Yeah. All right. So time to go move on to Daniel CS, which has great questions here. Have you used oil or enamel? Well, actually on my desk right now, I have two oil, uh, paints, uh, Windsor Newton's oil colors. And, um, I like using these to demonstrate web blending because they take forever to dry. So you could just go back and forth with a blend so you're happy. You know, you could keep going back and forth. Tomorrow you come back, I'm too tired. I'm gonna blend in tomorrow. Blend in tomorrow, that's okay. I mean, you may put some mineral spirits, reactivate it, keep blending. If you put too much of one color, add more of the other color. Keep going back and forth forever until you're happy with your blend. It's just the way it is. You can't get it wrong. You're like. I love oil paints when it comes to that. Uh, wet blending uh, two colors and getting it buttery smooth. You can do that on miniatures, although it's gonna take about two weeks to dry it effectively. Uh, so when it comes to that, when you're going to do freehand like that and use oil paints or something like that, make sure that you're not gonna be able to touch the mini for two weeks. Like start another project, finish that other project, come back to this one in two weeks, half a month, and then maybe, you'd be able to continue onto it. Have I used oil paint to paint an entire mini? No, I have not. I have not. Uh, do I love oil paints? Yeah. I also make washes. I like these two colors right here. These are great for pin washes or doing washes on metallics and really make it look grimy. Uh, I'm using Van Dyke Brown and Ivory Black for that. Mixed in with some mineral spirits and yeah, you could do a wash on that. Or you could do pin washes to get just, you know, the recesses on things. That's really good too for that. So yeah, I use oil. As far as enamel, I actually I just use enamel on my 19, uh, 53 Ford uh, Crown Vic that I painted up for my brother for his birthday. And I like using enamel for those type of cars because of shine. I mean, you can't build it. You can't beat it. Plus they're durable and tough. It's like enamel is what you use for nail polish, right? So, you know, they're meant to take a beat. So yeah, I like, I like to paint my model cars, uh, scale cars uh, with enamels. So yeah, you know, some people do lacquers, but I don't know, it's kind of, you know, that's their thing. So yeah, have I uh, have experience with both of them? I do. For certain applications, I would not do an enamel coat on a Space Marine ve uh, vehicle or Space Marine itself, personally, because um, they also take a very long time to gas out. Like, they will smell like paint for several days, for a week or two, you know? They just, they gas out for a long time. And you can't put anything on top of it until you can't smell the paint. Like, if you could smell the paint, then there's an additive still trying to gas out. I would not touch anything. So it'll take a very long time to work with enamel paints. So be wary of that. If you're gonna use those type of paints, just you know know that you need to let it dry 100% completely before moving on. And that takes a lot longer than a lot of people think, you know? Oh, but it has been drying for a month now. Doesn't matter. It smells like paint, it's still wet. Yeah, I could touch it. Doesn't matter. Somewhere in there, it's still wet. If you press hard enough, it's gonna happen. You know, bad things will happen. You leave a fingerprint is what you do. Indent one. Um, yeah, so I have. Here's another question. Also, how do we practice brush control? I love that question. I love that. Actually, I was practicing my brush control. My handshake 
but I do find details. So with Murderfang, and I'll show you over here, I actually did black lining on the inside of these panels, on the outside of the chains and the skulls, all over on the shield. Like I did a whole mess of black lining uh, throughout the entire miniature. There's a the shield. Um, and it really just adds contrast to it. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to really find motor skills, uh, up your fine motor skills and get your control. You get better at what you practice, so you have to practice doing things that are, you know, uh, fine motor skilled movements over and over again until you get in. Black lining is definitely something you should do and I recommend for you. Now, one of the things that I do since my handshake is I, I actually brace my hand. I uh, tuck in my arms, I put my hands together like this, one into the other, and I literally grasp my wrist so I can't do this very well without me controlling it. Uh, and I'll show you. All right, so um, I'm gonna take my Series 7 here. Uh, so while blacklining, what I did was, is that I'm holding the miniature like this, right? And I'm holding my hand, I'm resting it on it. See, I'm clasping over here, and then I'm restricting the movement, and I'll show you over here, and then I just go black line straight here. See that? Black line straight here. Now, I used the formula to get the black lining. Uh, let me tell you about the formula. Uh, formula in which I used was uh, FW inks. Uh, this is black, really blacky black black. Um, and I use some Flow Aid. This is from Liquitex, in which I actually take Flow Aid and I put it into a smaller bottle so I can just, you know, dropper bottle it in. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I always have some on my wet palette. Um, so yeah, those are the two. So what I do is I dip my brush on the wet palette, it's very wet, um, my moist brush into the wet palette, and I just dip the tip into Flow Aid, and then I go into the ink, and I kind of go back and forth and kind of work that into the mixture uh, of the water and the Flow Aid. So just the tip, and then move it back and forth. And then what I do, try to do is I'll go into and take a uh, napkin, and I'll press this, the brush up to the ferrule into the napkin, and it's gonna release any extra water that's in there. Um, so you have, to me, that's the right amount. And what I try to do is like, I actually try to draw a line, a straight line. If it's really thin and it's, re and it's flowing really well, then I'll just go and start black lining straight here. Again, uh, what you're doing is you're holding your wrist, you're holding the item, and then you just, you know, wow like that. All right, so that's, that's what I do. Uh, so limiting, the motion of limiting the motion of your um, of the movements of your hands definitely helps control your brush strokes. Another thing that I do uh, that I actually did and purposely see how I I built Murder Fang so I can practice my brush control and learn black lining better. I did black armor for um, Ulrich the Slayer, and what I was focusing in on getting better with is edge highlighting. And I do a formula for that too, okay? Um, and edge highlighting is using the side of the brush, like right here, instead of the tip of the brush. And what you're trying to do is trying to get 45 degree edges and gently go back and forth. Sort of like a pendulum, where you start here and you keep going back and forth and you get closer and closer to the mini 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 until you actually touch it lightly and you get that done. And that is just one line in which you do. It's very, very light. Sort of like a pendulum coming down and swinging. And I learned that from Banshee, um, Alfando Gilderas. Um, how to get that just really close and do the edge highlighting like that. I think it's uh, it's it's brilliant. And I was learning my brush control by doing edge highlighting and black lining. Those are the two things that I did uh, to learn a little more brush control. When you're done with that, um, I challenge you to write your name really small using a brush. Like take the ink out and the same thing you did for black lining, but do it on a piece of tape or something like that. Just write your full name out. See if you can do it. Uh, go, go online uh, to a little calligraphy uh, font or something like that. Write your name in calligraphy and try 
decided to do that and copy it. It's not going to look excellent, but it's going to look a lot better than it did if you didn't try, you know? Um, so there's that as well. So brush control, excellent question. You have to practice that on, and use yourself in scenarios in which you can practice that so you can get better at it. And yes, um, getting better at it would involve uh, practicing it with backlining as well as edge highlighting. Those are two things that you can do to help your brush control just a little more and try to take it to the next level. Also bracing your hand is really important, especially if your hand shakes like me, like an old person me. So yeah, definitely that. Um, hopefully that helps. Okay, James Meeks, how do you make glazes? I'm very grateful for this question. Some people actually make the glazes where they, you know, make the ratio, put the paint in, and then, you know, put it in a bottle and have the bottle. I don't believe that's a good uh, thing for anyone to do for the simple reason is that you don't know the, where paints were stored, what factory before you bought them. You have no idea the consistency of the paint so you open the bottle and spray it. Uh, different brands react differently when you're trying to, you know, uh, make it into a glaze. So trying to make this into a glaze would be different than trying to make this into a glaze would be different from trying to make this into a glaze or this into a glaze, not just the brand, because it's just the thickness of each one varies and the, the product itself are different. So you really can't treat them the same if essentially the root of what they are are different. So instead of making a ratio what i do is i use this magic thing called glaze medium right glaze medium actually helps to make it a glaze what i do is i put it on my um my wet palette when i set up my wet palette i put my parchment paper down uh and make sure that the wet palette is super wet and on one side upper right hand corner i use flow aid um in the middle, top middle, uh, I'll put on some um, I'll put on some slow dry, uh, and then on the right hand side, I'll put some glaze medium. So when I want to make a glaze, what I'm going to do is I usually dip my brush into the flow aid, just just the tip. Right. And then I'll take, scoop up some of that glaze medium, and then I'll go into whichever paint that I'm going to use and wiggle it back and forth. And I'm going to wait until it starts, like when I pull it out, it starts going back by itself. Pull it out, goes back by itself. Pull it out, goes back by itself. At that point, that's a pretty heavy glaze. If I want to make something like I did for Arlurk the Slayer, um, when I painted his head, and I like to paint the pale uh, figure uh, head, but I do give him color, and I made a glaze in there, um, which I take red, I take red ink, and I do that glazing motion, where I, I actually go into the flow improver, and then I go into the glaze medium uh, with a moist brush, and I go into the ink, wiggle it back and forth, and dilute the sucker and keep doing that until I get the ratio where I, when I put it onto a napkin, it looks see-through almost. At that point, I'm gonna take it and I kind of just like glaze over the area where I want red, okay? Uh, and then I let it dry completely. And then I glaze over it again, adding another layer to it. Then I let it dry and then I glaze over it again, adding another layer to it. So the thing is, is that when you are, thinning things to that point, you need to work in successive layers in order to bring up the color that you, you want. You need to work in those successive layers uh, and you get it darker. Now, if you go too far, he's gonna look like he has a sunburn on his head and his head is red. So be careful with that. You can't take it too far. That's why you need to let it dry completely after each layer and then determine whether you wanna push it even further or not. Um, so. I don't actually make the glazes. I do make them on my wet palette itself. All right, those are for the questions. I do have to give a shout out um, and, and thank you for Scott, the miniature maniac, who actually inspired me, of 
of course, after I ordered the AK Interactive Snow uh, to make snow for this base. This is pretty amazing right here. And I had a technique uh, with Vince Ventruella had to help me out, and this is part uh, Scott the Miniature Maniac and Vince Ventruella combined. Uh, but I, I've always used uh, some kind of basing snow material. Uh, I used um, glue all for that, and I use some baking soda. Um, but then I used like this the pellet material, and I found out that the, the texture was just too coarse for me. Um, and then of course I actually added some uh, Scrappy Cat glitter glue. Yeah, that's right, Scrappy Cat. Uh, but you can add any glitter glue to it. I just used this one because it's the one Vince used when he did his tutorial. And um, it adds some sparkle to it. But I never knew that you can just use straight um, baking soda to make snow. And here's a secret ingredient. If you haven't seen him, go watch his video because he explains it a lot better than I do. But you're going to want to add matte medium to it. So uh, it's matte medium glue all some glitter glue and some water and that's what i made snow out of and it came out really really well i did order ak and interactive and uh scott did not do a review on ak interactive snow um i might i might do a review on interact on uh comparing um baking soda snow to ak interactive snow but if I get AK Interactive Snow, I'm still going to use the glitter in it because every now and again you'll see a sparkle. And you're not going to know where it came from. And it's light hitting one of those uh, sparkly bits that you got to put in there with the glitter glue. Um, and that, I think that's really cool. All right, so I just wanted to shout that out before I continued. All right, so now on to the main topic of the week. <laughs> All right, so Space Marines, um, you can create your own chapter now in the Space Marines uh, preview because uh, that codex is coming out. But it's weird because it's Space Marines, but I always thought it was, you know, Ultramarines. It says Space Marines, so that's interesting. Uh, so that means you have different factions in it. You know, you have your, um, well, you have your White Scar and you have, uh, your salamanders um, and then there's like little supplements I wonder are Space Wolves going to come out with supplements or are we going to have our own codex that's interesting right? I don't know what do you think leave a comment below oh and if you have a question for question of the week please ask below I love answering questions I love this um, although I my, my intention is that the computer will be built by next week and this will be a live show maybe I don't know we'll try that and then I, you can ask me questions live that would be kind of cool watch out for that I'll try to announce it I'm, I'm trying to get this computer built this week so this way by next week I could be you know playing around with learning how to use you know the programs so we'll see we'll see all right all right, so the main topic is creating your own chapter. Now, why, the reason why I like this is we always were able to create our own chapters. I mean, the lore of 40K indicates that there are certain, uh, that the actual Legion uh, Astartes were separated into smaller factions so they don't have another Horus Heresy type of uh, incident. So they split them up onto factions, into sub-factions. And they're sub-factions, so let's say... Um, uh, you have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, so you have Imperial Fist, and there's these successor chapters uh, that have the Imperial Fist powers of, you know, expert at sieges, uh, but they have different color patterns. So you can paint them, and you have the freedom to paint them any way you want. But here's the difference now, and this is what I love, 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 love. They actually have, you know, chapter tactics that you can mix and match for your own legion, uh, for your own chapter that you create. And I love that idea. I absolutely love that idea because when you go into uh, a competition, when you're playing a game, other teams not gonna know what you got. They have no idea what you got. They don't know your attack because they can't really plan for it. So they don't know what's going to come up. And having that element of surprise is pretty cool. It kind of 
evens the playing field a little bit um, and gives you a kind of a little bit of an advantage, which is kind of cool because there are a lot of people that just kind of like and just completely take over your um, your table. <laughs> So this will give them something to talk about. I would give them something to uh, think about when it comes to um, coming up against you and your faction. Now the thing is, is you can change it. Like you not, it's not set in stone. Like one week you can make your uh, your chapter one way, but you know, and there's no hard and fast rules. You can pick other chapter tactics next time you play and keep people guessing. That's what it's about, man. Keep people guessing. I love that element to the game. I think it's going to really up the game, and I love that feature. A lot of people didn't even note that feature, but I'm telling you, that's that. If, if it is what I think it is, it is an amazing feature, and I love it. Um, so, yeah, available codexes for the Space Marines are developing successor tactics. Uh, so paint them as you like, roll some dice, and never been easier to create something unique. One of the things that you can also make is you, they actually have a printout of uh, your own successor chapter. So I tried to just <laughs> try to have some fun with this and made a TMP successor chapter right here. Okay, so you have your uh, paintbrush over here getting wet, your TMP sign over here. I don't know what I was thinking over here. Some how because I like the how, right? So TMP, paintbrush, I got an airbrush tactics and hobby stuff over there. And I just have different kind of designs. TMP, of course. Uh, here goes your uh, your standard there, your chapter symbol, TMP. Put some stripes in there because I'll just have some fun in there. Just made my own Space Marine Roller. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I love this. I love that you have the creative freedom to do this. I love that you can keep people guessing. I love that it is creative um, and you know you get some kind of tactical advantage. Now I think most people would want to create um, uh, their own chapter only because they have the ability to change things up. But you know me, Space Wolves for life. <laughs> anyway anyway great idea love it love it what do you think about creating your chapter your own chapter and if you were to create your own chapter what would it look like I mean what would it have what kind of tactics would you give it interesting huh all right so that there's a start conversation starter as well all right well I just really wanted to talk about that uh, and how excited I am for, you know, new chapter tactics and, and for this codex that's coming out. I think it's really major. They're trying to do some new things in GW. I think they're trying to unify all the Space Marines. Because if they did that, they make it really easy for them to work on things like Xenos and stuff like that. Just saying. Just saying. If they're putting all their efforts in the Space Marines, because, you know, Boy Scouts are definitely selling then all the other factions are not going to get as much love. But, you know, if they simplify one of their Boy Scouts, then all the other factions will get love. It's just the way it works. All right. So, I don't know. I think that's it. I'm really excited about getting the computer started. Maybe by this time next week, I'll be coming to you live. Ooh, that would be awesome. Well, anyway, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.